Well, today is Friday morning, and we're going to talk about um, cultivating community together. Um, the, the reading in this section, boy, I could spend several days on it. It is so good, but right now I need mocha. Oh boy, that gets me going. I love my morning coffee. Any coffee lovers out there? I bet there are a lot of them. Um, cultivating community. Uh, five characteristics of five more characteristics of biblical community. Yesterday we talked about four. Today we're going to talk about five more. And God's house and God's family should reflect God's love and Christ's presence. And the Holy Spirit will be bearing the most wonderful fruits. If we do this God's way, we don't have to have church um, that is, I don't know, a bad experience for people. Um, but we can, with God and His Word and the Holy Spirit and following biblical principles, we can experience extraordinary relationships. It's so, so extraordinary that our relationships inside the church um, should actually be um, like a witness to the community. It's like, wow, look at how those Christians love each other. That's what it should be. It's not always, but that's what we're aiming for. So that's going to take... Um, Honesty, number five on our list. We did four yesterday. Number five is honesty. Be truthful, upright, straight up, free of deceit. Lying should not be acceptable among God's people. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor is the ninth commandment. Um, Leviticus 19.11. Don't steal. Do not deal falsely. Do not lie to one another. Colossians 3.9. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with his practices. John 8, 44, the devil is a liar and the father of lies. Ephesians 4, 15, speak the truth in love. Proverbs 24, 26, whoever gives an honest answer kisses the lips. Ephesians 4, 25, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. So honesty in relationships means you will be truthful in what you speak and share but it also means that you will address issues that need addressing. Honesty doesn't mean um, only what comes um, out of your mouth needs to be truthful. Honesty also requires sometimes that you have to um, deal with things. Like you, you've heard that saying, the elephant in the room. No one's dealing with a very obvious thing. And the, the message is a uh, kind of more of a loose translation of Bible passages and the the message from 1 Corinthians 5 3 to 12 is really good um, listen to this you must not simply look the other way and hope it goes away on its own bring it out in the open and deal with it better devastation and embarrassment than damnation you pass it off as a, as a small thing but it's anything but you shouldn't act as if everything is just fine when one of your Christian companions is promiscuous or crooked, is flip, flippant with God or rude to friends, gets drunk or becomes greedy or predatory, you can't just go along with this, treating it as, un as acceptable behavior. I'm not responsible for what the outsiders do, but don't we have some responsibility for those within our community of believers? So honesty means truthful in what we speak. But it also means sometimes we're going to have to share some hard things. We're going to have to address some issues, to be honest with people. Okay, number six is humility. And that's pretty simple. A modest or low view of yourself. A sense of unworthiness. Not viewing yourself as more important or superior to others. Meek, not self-promoting. Not proud or haughty. Not arrogant or assert assertive. So pride builds walls and humility brings walls down or builds bridges. First Peter 5, 5, clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I like the saying, and I've heard many people say it, humility is not thinking less of, your, thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Um, number seven is courtesy. You need courtesy in a good group to build great fellowship. Showing politeness in one's attitude and behavior toward others, respectful, being considerate. Um, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In our heated political, racial, COVID 
world right now, wouldn't it be great to have some courtesy? Um, Rick Warren writes, community has nothing to do with compatibility. The basis for our fellowship is our relationship to God. We're family. One key to courtesy is to understand where people are coming from. Discover their history. When you know what they've been through, you will be more understanding. Number eight, confidentiality. Trust, proper and careful handling of information. Never sharing information that someone would not want you to share. Creating a safe place to open up. What you share in a group stays in the group because God hates gossip, especially in the form or a, of a prayer request. Proverbs 16, 28. A dishonest man spreads strife and a whisperer separates close friends. I'm sure you've had someone share something that you wanted to be confidential and it really hurt because they didn't have your best interest in mind. Rick Warren, oh, I'm sorry, number nine, frequency. you got to meet often. You have to have these other characteristics, but if you want to have a close, intimate, deep relationship, then you have to meet frequently. You must have frequent, regular contact with your group to build genuine fellowship. Relationships take time. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Acts 2, 46. Day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes, they received food with glad and generous hearts. So the early church is a model of spending a lot of quality time together. Rick Warren writes, when you have, you have to spend time with people, a lot of time, to build deep relationships. This is why fellowship is so shallow in many churches. Community is built not on convenience, but on conviction that I need this for my spiritual health. When you look at the characteristics, the list of characteristics, it is obvious why genuine fellowship is so rare. It means giving up our self-centeredness and independence in order to become interdependent. But the benefits of sharing life together far outweigh the cost It prepares us for heaven. So, if you want great fellowship in our church, in our community, uh, uh, small group communities, life group, then we're going to have to learn to be humble, honest, um, polite, courteous, handle information confidentially, and spend time together. If you're willing to do that, you can have some great community. Oh. And by the way, it's because Christ Jesus is in the center. When Christ is in the middle of relationships, he teaches you how to do all these things. And I'm, I'm interested in that. I better put some more time in. How about you? God bless you. Have a great day.